Greetings Sim Captains and welcome to San Francisco. Today we're going to be exploring one of the most critical and useful pieces of equipment on board a modern airliner, the FMC or FMS, whatever you'd really like to call it. And specifically today we're going to be working with the default laminar FMS system. To use this we're going to be operating a Boeing 747-400, one of the many default aircraft provided in X-Plane 11. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high quality aviation content and entertainment. So now let's get on board our 747 here and get things started. The FMS or FMC or the CDU or on an Airbus, the MCDU, they're all basically referring to the same thing, which is the uh, computer suite that handles the navigational functions in a modern commercial airliner. Generically speaking, these things tend to look like an oversized graphics calculator and are usually located about here beside the pilot's leg. Um, this is the Boeing 747-400. We do have a tutorial if you don't know how to start it up, but you will need it powered up before you can actually uh, insert a flight plan. So here we go. We have on board the 747 a pilot's and a co-pilot's FMC, or this is actually the computer display unit or CDU. There is a third because it's the queen of the skies and she's got a third down here. But uh, that third is actually kind of a dummy in this one. If you look at both screens, you'll notice they're moving in tandem, whereas the co pilots is actually an autonomous system. It's going to get the same plan we put in, but it is a separate, uh, you can display separate screens as we go. So to make life simpler here, we're going to be using the pop-out FMC, which is one of the fantastic features. Even though the default FMC is a little bit limited, it's because it's built to be used with almost anything. Uh, Apparently Laminar has set this thing up to operate a little bit like the Collins Regional Aircraft FMC. Uh, if you're familiar with the Boeing ones or if you fly the Zebo, this is pretty much Boeing logic minus the engine data and the other weight type things. It's, it's really just gonna handle navigation uh, laterally and vertically. Okay, uh, I do have us where we can also see the MFD, the multifunction display, because much of what you put in here will be populating on the multifunction display. So to start things out, you get this index page. There's not much you really need to do from here. Uh, to actually install your own flight plan, you will need to have a route. You can generate that using SimBrief. And we have an entire video on that. Watch the corner, we'll put in a pop-up for a link to that. But I'm not gonna get into how you would generate that flight plan. So if you don't already know it, go watch that video and then come back. Okay, we do need to talk a little bit about the layout of this device so that as I'm telling you steps, you're not too terribly lost. We have obviously a display in the center where information will be populated, menus and other choices. At the bottom is something called the scratch pad between these two brackets and that is where when you type things will show up as well as when you get a warning message or some other message from the system it will populate there. Down the left hand side are these uh, line keys and they select whatever is right beside it. Down the right hand side we have right hand line keys which again select the thing with the arrow beside it. So just to mess with the line key here, this one points to status, boom, there's your status. We were just on the index page. We can get there by using this line key. Well, you notice we also have a page key for index. So let's talk about the functions. Index, flight plan, climb 
uh, this vertical, vertical navigation for climb, cruise, that'll be speed and altitude, and descent, which will be, you know, when, what speed, um, what angle are we descending at. Here's a uh, direct two. Here's legs. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time in the legs page later. Departure and arrival, that's uh, basically selecting your runway approaches, the runway itself, as well as the star, the standard arrival. Uh, the departures, that's selecting your runway and your SID, a standard instrument departure. The SID and star, they're basically like on-ramps and off-ramps to freeways. Uh, they're a preset procedure for getting you into the airport environment. Hold. We're not really going to do anything in this video with the hold function, but there it is. Prog. That's not for program. That is for progress. This is a fantastic button, and I will tell you right now, this is what I do with the first officers. I put it on progress, and I pretty much leave it there. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, you'll see later when we're actually flying why. Fix, you can set up a fix. Nav radios, you know, depending on the aircraft, sometimes this does something, sometimes it doesn't. Check this out. Nothing happened on my display, right? Things have happened down here. Uh, the 744 is set up to do some of your radio functions by utilizing this isn't that crazy check that out you're, you're gonna tune the radio on screen you're gonna tune the course on screen so if you didn't know that about the 744 I don't even think that's in my uh, tutorial on it it's just a quirky little neat thing they stuck in there all right so let's get that back out of there and then we have at the bottom of that section a previous and a next page up in the top right corner of the display will always tell you how many pages there are and what page you are on. Okay, below that we have sort of a calculator setup, a numeral pad, also decimals and plus and minus, as well as our keyboard. It is set up alphabetically, not in the QWERTY like your computer keyboard. Also take note of the delete button in the bottom right corner, the clear key. Very important. Uh, if you make a mistake in the scratch pad and you need to remove it or you have a message from the system and you've already read it to get it out of there you need clear above that one of the absolute most important keys execute this little light will tell you that you have made a change and it is not yet established in the plan officially so once you hit execute it becomes an active part of your plan all right, so let's get going. First thing, click flight plan. There's basically three, four things we really need to know here. We need to know uh, to, uh, total, just to get this in. A departure airport, and we're gonna put that here for origin with the ICAO code, that's a four letter code. Um, next, we will need the star, sorry, not the star, the SID, the departure, and that's going to tell it the procedures to use to get us away from the airport environment. Then we will need our route string, which will be uh, GPS waypoints, VOR, radios, beacons, etc. And then after that, we put in the star, which is the arrival. So again, leaving that route string we put in into the airport environment of the destination and the destination goes here. So those are all basically routes, airport, runway, departure, the actual route you fly through the air, the arrival, the approach to the runway, the runway name at the airport. Bam, there's your whole plan. Uh, the next uh, thing that you just can't skip is going to be the cruise altitude. Again, Simbrief will tell you what to do, but if you're just messing around, figuring out how to use this, uh, you just start with 30,000. I mean, don't, don't try and fly Transpac in the 744 at 30,000 feet. But if you just want a generic, where roughly our airliner is going to be flying, 30 to 35,000 is going to be most common. Okay, so let's start inserting the flight plan. We are at San Francisco, which is K S F O.
now that we've typed in KSFO, we're gonna click the line key for where we want that to go. So clicking here at the left hand first soft key will populate it in the origin. It's a pretty simple concept. So things you wanna type, you don't type them up here, you'll type them in the scratch pad and then move them. So now we type in what the plan ends with, but I'm gonna teach you another little trick. If you click, uh, and this works for the pop out, not really the on screen, because when you click the on screen, it toggles the pop out. But in the pop out, if you click in the scratch pad region, you should get blinking brackets. While those brackets are blinking, you can access your real keyboard to type on this. So uh, it, just for data entry, a million times faster. So K P H X, uh, Papa Hotel X Ray, that is Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Click the right soft key, it has now filled. Company route, that is for saving and loading saved flight plans. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this video, but if you do this a lot, it's worth figuring out how to do it. It's not very difficult. You can get your SIM brief flight plan saved into your FMS folder under resources and you'll open it from here and then most of it will be loaded and almost ready to go. But uh, that's not what I'm trying to do with today. So the flight number, that's up to you. This is a British Airways uh, retro livery. So let's put us in as BA. Today happens to be February 22nd. So I'm just gonna call us flight 222. You can go pick a real route uh, number if you want, but it, it's irrelevant that whatever you put in there does not affect the operation of the system. Okay, so now that we have departure and arrival airports, now we need to get in the runways, the actual departure arrival procedures, and the full route. Uh, while on this page, the route is going to be the next thing. So coming off of SimBrief, I have, and I'll probably type this up here on the screen somewhere, you should see it pop up, a full route, KSFO, runway 28 left, to Wesla 4. Wesla 4 is the standard instrument departure procedure. Next uh, in the actual route is Lotion, then Boil, then a VOR, which is Bravo Lima Hotel, BLH. And then we're on to the star, the arrival for Phoenix, which is Hyder 1. Arriving at KPHX, anticipating runway 08. So uh, again, we need the first actual piece of the route, which comes after the departure, and that is Lotion, L-O-S-H-N. Oh, you see we've made a little mistake there. Since we're in keyboard mode, I can use uh, delete to go back or you know, I can click on screen. Oh, that's actually not what we want. I should have used clear. Let me show you that right now. L, O, S, let's do two H's. Oh, oops, two H's. Click clear. So this delete is gonna be used for removing things from the legs page. It's not a uh, keyboard delete. Clear is kind of your backspace. So L-O-S-H-N. All right, now this will go in the two. This is the beginning of a, a route thread. It's going in two. The via on the left, that is for uh, airways and jetways. So lotion goes here on the right under two. Click the soft key. You can see it's populated. It's magenta because it would be the first active waypoint in the plan at this moment and we can now execute. You'll notice in the top left corner, it says ACT, meaning the flight plan is now active. All right, we do have some more waypoints in that route thread. So we're on page one of two. Let's click us over to page two of two. We'll be filling in more things here in the twos. I do not have any uh, jetways to put in today, so I will be leaving that blank. They will automatically populate as direct. All right, our next one is Boyle. After that, Bravo Lima Hotel, VOR. Okay, this is a great thing because uh, this could happen to you. It very often does. When there are two waypoints with the same name, whether they're radios or uh, GPS coordinates or something, 
Actually, I'm not sure I've ever seen this happen with the GPS, but I guess it does. If there's more than one in the database, you have to tell it which one is correct. Uh, the one at the top will be the closest. Any further ones will come down after that. You can go check your SimBrief plan and check the radio uh, transmitter and you'll see what it should be. But really a very simple way, again, because we're not in a real aircraft, so life and limb is not a threat here. But for simming, the closest one is usually the right answer. 443 nautical miles makes complete sense for a trip from San Francisco to Phoenix. 5,644 nautical miles would only make sense if we were doing laps from San Francisco to Phoenix over and over again without ever landing. So this is a ridiculous option. So go to the soft key for the correct one. It has now populated with the correct one. All right, uh, after that is gonna be the arrival. So we are done with this segment. I'm going to execute and they are now in. All right, we've got in the departure arrival airport. We've got in the basic route. We now wanna get in there the runways and the departure and arrival, the SID and the STAR. So I'm going to click this departure arrival button. You can see the first airport and the destination airport. You get a departure at San Francisco, but you get arrivals for both. You can ignore the SFO arrival. That's just if we're preparing. Let's say uh, on departure we have some technical fault with the aircraft and need to come back. This would allow us to very quickly set up to return to the airfield. So uh, that's why it's there. You don't really need it right now. Quick departure. For San Francisco, we are anticipating runway 28 right. So uh, that's not on this page, but you can see we have one of three pages. So let's go down 28 right. Now that I've selected that, I don't know if you noticed, the uh, number of SIDs available is actually shortened. A moment ago, when it wasn't selected, it went off the page. The reason for that is not all SIDs actually connect to 28Right. And the one we want is Westla 4, which is actually sitting on this page, very convenient. Click that. This transition is not something I saw in our route, so I'm not going to put that transition in. If I wanted to, I'd just click this and it would show up there. Notice the graphic for SEL, meaning selected. We've selected SID West Lafour and Runway 28 Right, but they are not active yet. We're also clued in by the light above the Execute button, telling us these aren't active yet. So here we go, execute, and now they are active, ACT, ACT. All right, we've got in departure, arrival airport, we've got our route, we have the SID. Now I'm going to click departure, arrival again, and I'm going to put in the star for Phoenix. Uh, if you actually already kind of know how to use an FMC, you don't need to bother putting in the comments. I know you probably shouldn't do this right now. And if you ever hear somebody say that, it's because in VATSIM or in the real world, ATC could very well, en route, change how you're going to enter, or the runways in use might change, and your arrival might no longer bring you uh, to the correct side of the airport. So this is something a lot of people hold off on until they're en route and getting substantially closer. If you're flying offline, which is how I'm gonna do this flight, uh, there's zero chance that ATC is going to tell me anything that I need to pay attention to. So I can quite confidently put in the full route right now. All right, in Phoenix, we want uh, the star Hider 4. Uh, wow, we've got five pages here. So let's scroll through these, C's, D, E, H. There we go, Hider 1. Okay, we've clicked it. I see in the transition list BLH, and that is one of our uh, routes. That's actually where our route ended, so let's click that. And then they want us to land on runway 8. A quick note here, you have options. When you were taking off, you didn't need options because you're just taking off. When you're coming into a runway, you have different procedures. So here's the ILS procedures for 7s, 8, and 2526. On the next page, RNAV procedures. Oh, one lonely loke procedure. That's pretty old school. 
you can pretty much pick what you want. The RNAV will give you GPS waypoints the whole way down to the runway. And the uh, ILS, you'll need to tune the radio. And that's uh, maybe something you know how to do, maybe not. We might even have a video on that. I need to, uh, I need to check. I think Flight Brother Lee uh, did some videos on I Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure he did. I'll try and toss that link in too. So let's do an RNAV to runway eight. Click BXK. I'm not gonna select that for right now. Um, hopefully that won't generate any issues. So Hyder one, BLH eight looks good select they are oh, sorry execute and they left select mode and are now active all right uh we've got the full routing in now we did the airports and flight plan we did the uh two and i know this list got longer now and then we went and did departure arrival departing san francisco those are active arriving phoenix active the full route is in Let's go put in the cruise altitude. This page here, CRZ is for cruise. These are your, your vertical navigation pages, basically. Climb is setting up how fast you want to climb, altitude restrictions, when you were going to transition. Uh, cruise is just how fast we're flying once we're finally up there and staying at the same altitude, uh, as well as what altitude that will be. Descent is going to to tell us when we need to start to descending to get to all the target altitudes for the airport. And we've got, uh, again, transition altitude, speeds on descent, as well as vertical path on descent. So this would be 2.5 degrees. That's a pretty standard descent rate. So let's go to that cruise page because this is the one you have to enter. Climb and descent, you can pretty much ignore until you really feel comfortable. You really know what you want to do. So SimBrief should tell you a cruise altitude or you can just ballpark it if you're just messing around for the first time. The thing is though, you need to leave off um, the last couple zeros. So 35,000 feet is only gonna have one zero. And today, oh no, I'm sorry, 37,000. We were brief for 37,000. So instead of putting it in like this, I need it to look like this because it's called flight level 37 zero so if you're not familiar with that that's what it is the fms recognizes that as a flight level obviously we're not going to fly at 370 feet and it's now populated as fl370 you can see we have a warning here uh it anticipates that the aircraft will be unable to climb or descend i'm not sure where this is in the plan to a target of 25,000 feet which is a uh that's a restriction on the charts at this waypoint skull. I'm just gonna clear that because again, it's really not within what I'm trying to do in this video. Okay, now that we've got all the basic information in, it's time to go start checking that everything went in correctly and looks good. And uh, if you didn't notice, the MFD, the multifunction display, has started to generate a map at this point. So let's click legs. Once we're flying, this legs page is mostly where I leave it. It has now populated with speeds and altitudes. Some of these are showing uh, chart restrictions. Some are just what the computer has decided is the most logical for those. Going to the next page, we've got a big old discontinuity. That is a gap in the flight plan. Moving to the next page. Oh, you can see uh, see the CTR. It means that's where the map is currently centered, if you've noticed the uh, MFD changing over there. And we're within the descent now, so you've got some rather bizarre-looking altitudes, and I'll explain those to you in a moment. And I can see we've got something weird going on here. We'll check that in a moment. Another discontinuity. And there we go. Interesting. All right, so let's go back to our first page. And first thing I wanna do is clear these discontinuities. So here's how you do it. Click the soft key below 
the discontinuity. So clicking here, that selected BLH. Once I click this, it's going to move everything up and basically fill that gap and execute. Okay, let's go to the next page. That's good. Next page. Oh, discontinuity. Now it's on the bottom of the page. Clear that warning. So we got to go to the next page, grab the first thing on this page, go back one, stick it in, execute. There we go. Clear those warnings again. All right, so now the discontinuities are out. It means the flight plan has been fully stitched together. There's no gaps. And now we're going to zoom in a little with the, um, the mode. Uh, now, I already had it in plan mode, but it's probably in map when you start. So map should show where the aircraft currently is and the flight plan line trailing off from that. When we're checking our route, we want to go to plan mode. So here we are, we're in plan. And you notice we got a step button on the display. Here, see step appears and disappears, as does the centering. So center, the CTR, is telling you what we're looking at on the MFD. And it will allow us to click step, and it will go one line at a time through the entire plan. So here we go. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I want to change the range to Let's do uh, 20 miles. So step, step, looking good, looking good. Everything seems sensible. Uh, we're on to the next page. I have to apparently click next page to go to it. You would think it would jump for you, but I guess it didn't. Oh, by the way, top of climb, you see this green? Now, this is one major complaint uh, everybody has with the laminar default stuff. They tend to have these ridiculously illegible tiny fonts here there, there, there's the actual size of that I mean at a glance you can't even tell that's there but that would be your um... oh no that's not top of client that's top of descent I'm sorry I wasn't even paying attention where we were top of descent so this is where the aircraft will begin to leave flight level 370 on its way down to its next target of 3420 feet all right, step to the next one, step to the next one, step to the next one. Everything's looking normal. Just keep an eye on the map as we go through. Hider, Gila, Punt, Tyke. These are all supposed to be pronounceable. Oh, you see, we've got something crazy coming up here. We should not have anything crazy. Next page. Okay, that so that doesn't look right. Let's zoom in enough we can actually read. Kangor at view and some gobbledygook okay so something is obviously wrong with this Kagor Jamil at view oh interesting so here's fall go to Kagor that makes sense from Kagor to Jamil Jamil must be in this disaster uh, there's something overlapping here and then Edview's there, so it's coming towards Jamil and then trying to get back to Edview. That's obviously an entirely useless turn. So uh, I'm tempted to say we should just remove Edview. All right, I think we're going to do that. So I'm going to click Delete. Now that we've clicked Delete, it's waiting to know what we want to delete. I'm going to delete Edview. It's gone. Now let's go to the next page, grab the next item. Oh, we gotta clear that scratch pad first. Move it up. Clear those warnings. And it's looking put together. All right, there we go. So let's scroll back out, step back through the end of the flight plan. And what's uh, throwing me off a little bit here is normally you would see the airport in there. And I am not seeing that, which is a little bit strange. 
90 degrees, that seems improbable. <laughs> All right, that's an interesting one. And then uh, this is actually, I believe, the field elevation for Phoenix. So, well, we're going to proceed with this and see when we get there. Very often, you'll you'll see, you know, runway zero eight or whatever it is you're looking for, uh, because this is your uh, you know, look, we're climbing back up to 5,000 and hold. That is a go around procedure. All right, so just stepping through back to uh, back to page one, but we have a full and continuous flight plan programmed in at this point. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. So that's going to wrap it up for our FMC or FMS flight plan entry and initial setup. If you'd like to see more of how you use this in flight, that's actually more of an autopilot tutorial, but uh, we'd be happy to do it. So leave us that information in the comments. So for now, we're going to stop with the explanations and let you enjoy a few beautiful moments of the Boeing 747-400 by Laminar in this beautiful retro livery. We'll put the links to that in the file description. And this airport, KSFO, is also a freeware and we'll put that link in the video description. So until next time, remember, plan the flight and fly the plan. <laughs>